I'm so excited. Okay, you recognize Denville's office. <laughs> but this is not Denville. <laughs> different color skin, different face. <laughs> but he's so similar in his heart. And and um, this is Nick Haig. And he's 19. And um, he is kind of like now Denville's psychic <laughs> in a way. He's become, he has moved down here from um, Virginia. Frederick, Frederick, Maryland. Oh, Maryland. To become the youth pastor, right? And yeah. so, um, because actually, Denville used to be the youth pastor, and and Nick was um, raised up under him, kind of. You know, yeah. you learned a lot from him, and still right? do. Yeah, <laughs> still do. So, Nick has a very, uh, he has a story that I think a lot of people could identify with. I mean, it involves depression and it involves you know broken home all this kind of stuff so I just wanted Nick to tell it and because he it's like he at one point was even wanting to off himself he didn't know what how to he didn't want to live anymore but he'll get to that but and how God kind of brought him through so why don't you tell it yeah um so we'll start from the beginning then yeah um so my parents were they dated um they were never like really like together um like in a marriage context but um so when i was born it was um it was a huge shock and um i guess when, when she was pregnant it was a huge shock and um yeah I, I guess they didn't really know what what to do from there and then once they they broke up um, were you was, born uh, when they broke up yeah i was born they broke up shortly after i was born um, and you know they tried to make it work, but it, it didn't really work out. And then when I was about two, my mom took a job in Miami and moved here to Miami. And so from then on, from about age two to five, I would just for six weeks I would live in Miami with my mom. Oh my! And then for six weeks I live with my dad. Oh my goodness! We just go back every and forth. six weeks. Every six so weeks. So yeah. how does a baby travel? <gasps> yeah, my well, my parents. Whichever one I was with would fly oh me down goodness. and then fly back. Yeah, pretty. Well, that's pretty a commitment hassle. from them. They they both yeah. loved you. Yeah, they they love me very much. Um, you know, the story isn't you know meant to tell anything to the alternative. But um, but yeah, and so then when I turned five, I ended up living with my mom for for the primary school year, and then I would visit my dad, and then. Um, but you were equally close to both in your heart. You felt comfortable with e both. Yeah, of them? yeah, in di in different ways. You know, um, I, I love both of them very much. Um, they they both are, are different people and have different personalities, and so I, I mesh with them differently. Yeah. So um, so that's just you know yeah, that's, that's the nature of it. Yeah. yeah. And uh, so then it, around sixth grade, right before sixth grade, I moved with my father um, to Maryland, and then that was a huge transition. Um, and so I think. Like, like I was saying, like when you go through middle school, you know, when you go through puberty and, you know, you go through the changes and you're growing up and you're, you're doing different classes, um, there's a whole lot of um, identity shifting um, yes. and, just, and just who you think you are. And you're kind of beginning to learn who you, who you think you are and, and a lot of the cues you get from that is from other people. Everybody um, goes through that. Yeah, and I think even, even today, for, for many people, their identity is, is just given from, by other people. Um, what other people say when people say like, "Oh, you're ugly." Oh, um, if if people tell you that enough, you might begin to believe it. Um, that happened to me. Yeah, but this yeah, is not about me right absolutely. now. Absolutely, and it happens happened to me. Happens to a lot of people. Um, and so you know, you go, you kind of go with the roller coasters of middle school, and then sixth grade, it was kind of cool. Like people liked me, and then seventh grade, when your identity was in other people, and they begin to not like me in seventh grade. Like it just oh. just how it goes. Um, and so you take that hard. And like like they just, for no reason, just kind of like yeah. didn't want to be your friend? Yeah, and through other things. And so th during that time, it, it was very tough to go through. Um, you know, I began having like these, these dark thoughts and um, begin thinking about like, like suicidal thoughts and, and all that stuff. Um, just, you know, like, like, would anyone really miss me if I was gone? Um, and obviously the reality of it, that's not necessarily true because, you know, people, people are loved. But um, that's just w what you begin to think after a while. And Once did you, did you, were you like serious? Did you think 
how you would go about it and all um, that kind of stuff? I, I got like thought about just like logistically how that would work. Um, and I obviously I never got close enough to even try. Well, thank goodness. Yeah, it, but um, you know, it was it was a serious thought. Like, would I really care if I was gone? Um, and then you know, w with the roller coaster of of that age, once I got into eighth and, and ninth grade, um, I began to get a little more popular. And so with that, my identity shifted into that, like being could, popular. Uh, could I just ask, all right, what was the circumstances that they didn't like you and then all of a sudden they liked you? It's just um, like very little things that, that go on through middle school. Like you, you say one thing and people accept that and then they like it. Um, and people are, are temperamental in middle school as well. So, um, But yeah, so then when I got really popular, I started identifying with that. Um, I got in a lot of fights. I thought it was really tough. Um, really? Yeah. Like I, physical fights? Yeah. Yeah, I got in a lot of fist fights. And, and were um, you usually the winner? <laughs> <laughs> uh, usually, usually. I, but, you know, I was bigger than, I'm like the same size that I was when I was 14. Oh, so, yeah. I was bigger than people. Um, and, you know, just uh, just doing other, like bullying people, like womanizing, um, at getting into high school, like getting into like drugs and, and alcohol and partying. Um, and so w when you begin to identify with whatever people want to do and whatever they want to make you, you just begin to do stuff that you think that will make you accepted. Um, and so that's just where I found myself in. And uh, I, I mean, I was telling you, I remember like that w like one night when I was like just really drunk and high. Um, like after when I was coming down, I just felt like life sucks. Like this isn't what life is. Like it, or if it is, then then life is the worst thing ever. You know, just like. Yeah, you get those feelings yeah. when you kind of come down. Um, and how old were you? 14 or 15. Um, it's like you had you could see no future, no reason to live, and all that kind of yeah. stuff. Yeah, um, and the only reason to live was to do the things that I was doing. Um, and so just from that, um, I think on, on that trajectory, that was kind of like rock bottom for me, in a sense. Um, over the next like one or two years, um, through people, like for instance, my... Um, a good friend of mine's family, they, um, they, they were the first, I think, like, the mom and the dad were the first just example um, of, a, of a truly whole family. Um, it was a place where you hung out a lot. And, yeah. And you got to experience what it was like to be in a, a whole family. Yeah, yeah. And it was, you know, the mom just accepted me and, and loved me and, and, like, cared for me like I was a son. And, and the dad was just like, you know, because... I think they kind of knew what I was at that point, you know, yeah. and just the grace that they had for me and the love that they had for me, not to say, like, like oh, like, you're just some, like, scumbag kid that is just trying to be around. Like, no, they, they loved me and they cared for me and they, they taught me lessons um, and stuff like that. And they could have just as easily said, like, get out of here. Like, you have no business being around these parts. Um, but, you know, they, they took me in as one of their own. And I think that was, like, the first time that I was really... Um, from out, from an outside outside of like family, like really yeah. like unconditionally loved. Yes. Um, and where did that their source come from? I would... Yeah, they were they were a strong a Christian family, um, and so it was like the first time that I was getting really close with a Christian family, like other than like my mom is a believer um, and my family are, are believers. So um, to be able to see that from someone outside of my family was like really I think life altering wow. for me, um, and to be able to see it like. Not, not to say that they were perfect or anything yeah, like yeah, that, but um, just to say that that they really exemplified um, the love of God in, in such a way, like beyond like the knowledge and the answers, like they really loved. They lived out what you had only heard about. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, and so just um, I was always that that kid that would look around and, and would like ask them questions like in a skeptical fashion, like, so what does God do like this, like? Why does why does God treat people like this? And you know, over time and, and with patience and love, they would just be like, like they would they wouldn't like shove an answer down my throat, but they would just be like, well, like look at the other side of the coin here. And I'd be like, huh, I never thought about that. You know, well, give and me so, an example. What do you mean? Um, like I, I'm trying to think of questions that I would ask. I would be like, you know, talking about evil in the world. Yeah, a very popular question. Um, and I don't want to go into all the details of like the answer to that. Um if there is one, but, you know, I would be like, so why does God allow all this evil stuff to happen? And, and they would just, like, patiently be like, you know, well, um, like, if you legitimately wanted God to eliminate all evil, like, is it just, like, our 
standard of evil, or is it just is it like a is there an actual standard that's, of evil? Wow. And wow. so like that's really. <laughs> is it like well, can I be mad at God that that He's not fulfilling or exterminating an evil that I don't want? Because like I do stuff too, like all the stuff that I was doing on the side, like. I didn't want God to get me for that. I yeah, didn't want didn't God want to, to eliminate that. You. I wanted to eliminate like macro evil, like like on a big scale, like oh, like world hunger, like yeah, suffering, yeah, yeah, obviously, yeah, yeah. but not the stuff that that I wanted to keep to myself. Um, wow, that so, is powerful. I've never yeah. even thought of that. Wow. Yeah, and so just like through things like that, like um, just beginning to show another side of the coin, not necessarily like saying, well, well, no, you're wrong, and like you need to think this way. It was always just like. Well, consider it like this, um, and they're like, "Yeah, you're right," um, and consider it like this way, and so just like in a, in a very like patient and loving um, way, just begin to show me like um, a lot of truths and a lot of things that, that I never thought about, um, and just so over time, um, I began to like go to church with them here and there, um, and then through people down here when I would visit my mom, um, I would like people like Denville and, and people like Pastor Danny. Um, when he was the youth pastor back then, just like just loving me and taking me out, and Desmond too. Oh yeah. Um, pastor Desmond, Desmond, the youth pastor, two times ago. Um, just he would just take me out to, to dinner, like, and just just talk about whatever I wanted to talk about. Like we would just talk about. Okay, now, and, one question. Did you? Yeah. All right. During any of this time period, did you ever like try to talk to God yourself from your own heart? Yeah. Um, I think mostly like in church. Like when yeah. I would go to church, it, would it was be, like compartmentalized. Yeah, it, that's exactly what it was. <laughs> it was it was easy to talk to God then, but like, oh, like God, like I'm sorry for being how I am. But then like outside of church, right back to normal, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so like that's what always kept me hesitant was the fact that I thought God was just for holy people. Yeah. Um, I, yeah. I thought God was just for the people that had their lives together, and so that's kind of what kept me at distance from God. But to begin to learn that like. God deeply loves and cares for people that are that are not perfect. Yes, um, yes. And He pursues people that that aren't perfect, um, because none of us are perfect. Yeah, of and so, for me to like look on the outside and being like, oh, like those perfect Christians, right? Like they they deserve to talk and to communicate God, um, but not me. You know, I think God just began to tear that down and to wow. begin to reach me where I was. Um, and so, like when I became a Christian, when I really started to believe it. I didn't have like my life together. I didn't say, all right, well, I need to get rid of like the drugs. I need to get rid of the alcohol. I need to get rid of all this stuff. And then I'll become a Christian. That's what I thought before. Yeah. But the reality is just like, he, he makes a decision for you that, that he wants you and he loves you. Um, wow. Before, like way before you even begin to understand what he's doing. Exactly. That happened to me too. But um, wow. And so, so it's like one day you just, okay, two minutes, Jose. <laughs> Okay, so one day you just said, um, God, I want you in my heart, or what did you do? Yeah, um, this is about three years ago. And um, during all your crap, you just yeah. said, okay, come and help me, or what? Yeah, I was just like, um, like this is undeniable, like, I, I, and I gave my life to you. Wow. Uh, essentially, like, it, was, it was a very like thoughtful thing. Like, it wasn't just like, you know, for some people it's, like a, it's a, in despair, but for me it was like, you make sense like yeah. you make sense and I don't know all the answers but I'm gonna trust that you make the most sense wow. um, and so just from that just like my worldview changing like overnight like things that that I wanted to do I I no longer wanted to do or like things that that I didn't even think I struggled with I began to struggle with it and so I think the nature of struggling with things shows that there's something to struggle against Wow. Um, so yeah so just uh, just not necessarily like that I became perfect, obviously yeah, yeah, not, yeah. Um, but just the, the worldview changes and the outlook changes. One minute, okay. Um, and so, yeah, just... Uh, wow, like, that is powerful. Yeah. You know, Nick, you really, I, I've really not talked in depth to you yeah. before, and you touched me. It really... T <laughs> and uh, and for anyone watching this, it's not to, um, to, to pat me on the back and to say, like, wow, like, you did a good job of changing your life. Um, it's just an encouragement to say, like, wherever you are or anywhere you are, um, that you are loved and you are pursued um, by, by by people, hopefully. Hopefully people are communicating that to you, that you are loved, um, but that God, when nobody else cares, like, when no one else wants to talk or anything like that, in the deepest darkness of the night, like, God loves you and he thinks about you and he cares for you. Um, so Thank that's you. that's how I experienced that truth. Um, so that is that's amazing, and maybe in the future you can be on again talking about 
some if further down the line or something. Yeah. But that really, yeah, I really enjoyed talking to you. Very good. Thank Very good. You. Bye.